me Val and it is time to get into youth affairs. We are going to be talking about very very heated things that have been making headlines both in the digital space and in mainstream media. Of course you can interact with us. Give us a penny for your thoughts at Y54 on Facebook, Y254 channel on X, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram of course. The rest threads, uh, YouTube. By when's the last time someone used threads? I mean, it's because I never joined. I still don't get the, hi the hype, yeah, I don't get it. But hashtag of the day is when in the morning, or MCM, a day where we crush on our gentlemen. Now, without further ado, let me allow my guest to introduce himself. Hi. Hi. Good morning. It's good to see you again. Sense. Welcome Sense. back. Hey, bueno, me fry. Me no me fry. It's such a nice morning, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Please introduce yourself to the people. Uh, my name is Oinaina Gishere. Mm -hmm. I am a student leader at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I am the chairperson of the Men's Students Welfare Association. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new, uh, I have a new role. Wow. The, I'm the organizing secretary for all universities, the, the association for all universities in wow. the country. That is Kenya Universities and College, uh, Kenya Universities and College Students Association. Mm -hmm. So I'm the organizing secretary, such a nice role. Congratulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that is my newest role. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I am a founder of a cultural group mm -hmm. called Turea Mobi. It is a group that promotes uh, the Kiku cultures, teaches people how our fathers used to do our cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is what I do. And mm -hmm. up, above all, I am a comrade at the yeah. best university. Wow. Yeah. The? The University of Nairobi. The. I've done you injustice. Yeah. Okay, now that you're a student leader, let's start with something that was trending last week or something that caught my attention on the news. So apparently there was a call for all vers varsities, universities to recall admission letters to, from, to students. And this is from Dr. Beatrice Inyangala. Yes, and now the argument was uh, the letter should reflect fees offered at the household level. Uh, so, loosely translated, it means that basically now students are ch choosing courses based on affordability versus based on their qualifications. How is that working out right now? Um, uh, let me start by saying that the students who are joining first year on September, mm. they should be educated and they should be made aware of how this new funding model works. Mm -hmm. because. Uh, what they are doing is not right because you are not supposed to choose a course according to what you can afford. Mm -hmm. If that was it, then people like us could not be in the university and we are using the same funding model mm -hmm. which they are using. Mm -hmm. The new funding model should work to the advantage, to the advantage of the poor because you find uh, that a person is saying uh, he is choosing a course on, on how he can afford, according to how he can afford instead of choosing a course according to his qualifications. Yeah? So the new funding model basically works like this. They look at your household. How much do you earn? How many siblings do you have mm -hmm. at the university, at, uh, in high school? Mm -hmm. um, how much does your parent earn yearly? Mm -hmm. How much can you afford? Yeah? So when they gauge all that, then they'll come up with, uh, with how much they'll give you in terms of scholarships. That mm -hmm. is what they used to call capitation mm -hmm. on last year, but one. Mm -hmm. And now there's the help loans, mm -hmm. and then there's the upkeep. Yeah? Uh, let me give an example of uh, the scholarship part. You can be given 70% scholarship. Mm -hmm. Then they give you 22% loans. Mm -hmm. Then 8% you're supposed to, to, to pay. Mm -hmm. But the eight percent, they can also they also give you the upkeep money. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let me use my example. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave me seventy percent loan, yeah, of the two hundred and something thousand per year of my course. Mm -hmm. Then they gave me twenty two percent, the seventy percent scholarship, twenty two percent loans. Then I'm, uh, the, the, uh, the rem it remains around uh, eight percent. Now the eight percent for me. Uh, what I actually pay is around 8K. Mm -hmm. Then they give you an upkeep of around 30,000 mm -hmm. per year. That is 60,000 per year. So you see they are not supposed to, to, to worry about, um, uh, much about what they should pay. Mm -hmm. Because someone like me, mm -hmm. I think 
what the government gives mm -hmm. is all that I pay. Mm -hmm. I don't use my own money for, for my school fees. Same oh, wow. to many students mm -hmm. at the university, especially first years who mm -hmm. are uh, Sahih this year, mm -hmm. who, are, who, who are, will be on uh, second year, mm -hmm. on September. Most of them, they are paying 8K, 12K, 13, 13K, mm -hmm. and they are being given 24, 24K upkeep, mm -hmm. you see? So I think the government should make uh, these students aware of what uh, they are doing because they're not doing the right thing. I've seen uh, people going to, uh, applying for private universities, mm -hmm. and yet the government said they will only give scholarship to the public universities. Mm -hmm. So the 70% scholarship you won't get mm -hmm. if you apply for private universities. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you're being given at the private universities is the loans. Mm -hmm. You can be given that percent loan, then the upkeep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that is the disparity that is there between what the government says and what the parents and the students mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in an ideal situation, all the things you're saying are correct. But to say, me, for example, uh, help each other, maybe Kulipato, or the bursaries are not really coming through, or even okay, we had a conversation off air, maybe we should bring them up to speed about how Basra is now ad, ad distributed according to county, which brings us to the one man, one vote, one shilling. Maybe you can make that transition. Help us understand, first of all, if you were to explain it on, in layman's terms, eh, what is this one man, one vote, one shilling? One man, one vote, one shilling is a, is a formula for distribution of revenue. And you see, this formula is reviewed after every four years. The Constitution under, under, under the Act of the Commission for Revenue Allocation says the, revenue, the, the formula for distribution of revenue should be uh, reviewed after every four years. So what they are using right now, they are not using the one man, mm -hmm. one vote, one shilling. They, they are giving counties money according to how large they are. Mm -hmm. The, the, the poverty index mm -hmm. of the country, c c counties. But what uh, the, the opposition and uh, now the, uh, the, the Rigadi Brigade, they're calling, we are, we are being called villagers right now. <laughs> what we want is equity in the distribution of resources. Mm -hmm. Because you find a person in Wajia is being given more money than a person in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. Yet, Kiambu pays more taxes mm -hmm. than a person in Wajia. Mm -hmm. You see? So, uh, actually, when you conjoin the two on the school fees payment and the one man, one vote, one shilling, it will bl bring equality mm -hmm. and also equity. Because you find maybe a person in, from Wajia mm -hmm. or from Turkana mm -hmm. being given 12K bursary. Mm -hmm. You see? Because they are being given more money per person. So, that makes... Uh, uh, it, it increases the amount of money being given to students on bursaries. Mm -hmm. But a person in Kiambu, the amount of money they're being given per person, you find a student being given 2K, and the other one is being given 12K. Mm -hmm. Others are, are even being sponsored to go study out of the country. Mm -hmm. Yet a person, a student in Kiambu, or a student in Nyandarua, or a student in Nairobi, mm -hmm. doesn't have that uh, money to pay, to even pay the universities uh, in Kenya. So the one man, one vote, one shilling, wants to give the people who pay more taxes what uh, they, 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 they should be given back what they pay. What their money is worth. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. So, for example, a county, a place like um, Ruiro. Mm -hmm. Ruiro has more people than a place maybe in Nyandaru. Mm -hmm. And I've heard people saying that uh, we are starting to, to be tribal. But look at a place like Ruiro. Rural is more, uh, it's not kikuyu who are there. Mm -hmm. More people, uh, let's say for example, Kiambu. Kiambu is a metropolitan uh, county. Mm -hmm. More, uh, there are kikuyus, there are kisis, there are uh, the, the luyas. All tribes are there. And uh, when people start saying that uh, the, 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 the one man, one, sh uh, one shilling brigade is being tribal, then they are doing the wrong thing. Yeah. In your opinion, why? In my opinion, mm -hmm. because of this, why can you say that we are being tribal? Yet, a place like Kiambu, let's say in Kisi mm -hmm. or in Nairobi, Nairobi has all tribes mm -hmm. represented. So saying that Nairobi should be given more money, 
we are not we are not fighting for the kikuyus we are not fighting for the lawyers we are not fighting for 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 the kisses we are fighting for for the benefit of mm -hmm. the whole country mm -hmm. yeah because the, the 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 amount of money that akisi pays is the amount of money uh, the, the the amount of fees that akikuyu pays at the, at the universities at mm -hmm. the schools at the hospitals yeah and by bringing one man one vote one shilling we are bringing more resources to to the people because let's say a place is more populated than the other meaning more people go to school meaning they need more more uh, maybe bigger schools mm -hmm. more teachers better hospitals that will cater for all of their needs mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so a place basically a place that has more people has more uh, needs more services but you look at places uh, maybe the, the large counties like Turkana mm -hmm. not that they don't have the services not mm -hmm. that they don't have the hospitals the problem is the distance from uh, from that citizen mm -hmm. uko mashinani mm -hmm. to the to the to the hospital the is one. is just large mm -hmm. so what they say is they need to build more hospitals mm -hmm. to those people who are komashinani mm -hmm. yeah instead of uh, bringing the money maybe in nairobi build more hospitals build more roads mm -hmm. to solve the problem on jam and all mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. yeah so that is actually what the one man one vote one shilling mm -hmm. entails mm -hmm. i really like that you brought uh, his excellency into this the deputy president because how it unfolded well according to uh, media mainstream and digital how it unfolded to us is the first gathering was limuru 3 then limuru 3 there was a lot of i want to say gaslighting there was a lot going on first of all not everyone was invited and it looked like a meeting for the opposition again uh, one uh, martha Garo, the honorable was also talking about one man one vote one shilling then a few days or weeks later now we have his excellency coming and saying the same thing but it looked like almost nikawan kuna kamvutano flani between his excellency the president and the deputy and he had he he, he made a speech in his native tongue but it was very amusing to me kuona mtu make subtitles i was i was very amused but he loosely, not, uh, do not hold me to it, but not verbatim, but very loosely, he said that there are dark times ahead and that we need to be unified, etc., etc., etc. So what do you think he was alluding to? Uh, let me start by on the Limurudri. Uh -huh. uh, I saw people saying Limurudri was for the opposition. That's what it looked like, yes. But that is what the media actually did. Mm -hmm. They made people uh, see that Lemurudri was for the opposition. In your opinion? Uh -huh. Yes, in my opinion. Uh, Lemur I mm -hmm. was first called by Kibaki. Mm -hmm. Back then when uh, ref the referendum for the new constitution was being passed. Mm -hmm. So Kibaki wanted the Kikuyu community to come together. Mm -hmm. They say unity is strength. Mm -hmm. So they had to come together make their views mm -hmm. on what they want to be included in the constitution. Mm -hmm. So what that was basically what Lemuruan was all about. And the whole community, including Gekoyo, Embu, and Meru, they came together and talked with one voice regarding the constitution, the mm -hmm. new constitution. Lemuru II was called on uh, 2012, mm -hmm. which was all about to bring and uh, to make Uhuru Kenyatta, the kingpin of the mountain. Mm -hmm. So he was given something called the Modegi. Mm -hmm. And that was all about, they were talking about that Gashago doesn't have the, mm -hmm. the Modegi. Mm -hmm. That was basically how it's called. Uh, like it's, it's like a stick, which symbolizes power mm -hmm. of, the, of the mountain, mm -hmm. of the Kikuyu people. You see? So the Lemuru III was a meeting called to address the, uh, the to, to unify, first to unify the Kikuyu community, the Embo community, uh -huh. and the Meru, that is the Gema, to unify them so uh -huh. that they may speak with one voice regarding this one man, one vote, one Actually. shilling. Yeah? So it was not about opposition uh -huh. because all the pe if you say it, it, it was uh, an opposition meeting then, there were people who, there who were in, were in government. Yeah? Like what it was supposed to do is fight for what, what, are the, what is the ground saying? Yeah, 
What is the ground saying? Because right now people are, are, are feeling like uh, the citizens are the opposition, mm -hmm. then there's the government. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah? Like what the, the citizens want, it's like it's an opposition to what the government wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That is what people have, uh, have been made to think. But the citizens are, are the ones who are supposed to see what the government will do. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So the Limurudri meeting was not tribal, uh, tribal in any way. We saw the Mulembe Nation being planned. Mm -hmm. We've seen the Maasai coming together. Mm -hmm. We've seen other communities coming together to speak with one voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And people should differentiate between unity and tribalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah? When a people come together to speak uh, in one tongue because they're located in one place, in one region, because this country is divided in regions. When regions unify, then the country will unify, will have unity. Yeah? So that was what entails the uh, until the 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 the, the Lemurudri meeting. Mm -hmm. You had asked about. Uh, then we fast forward now when the, His Excellency the Deputy President now came and also said the same thing: unity is not tribalism, and so on and so forth. But he also had a moment where he was saying that we are about to face dark days ahead. Uh, what do you think he was talking about? Uh, for me, according to my view. Mm -hmm. You see the mountain mm -hmm. is Gema, that is Gikoyo, Embu and Meru. And when I think the, the other communities, the other regions knew that when we unify, we, have, we are strong. Yeah? So what the, the deputy president actually was saying is some people have seen that the strength of the mountain is in their unity. Mm -hmm. So they want to divide us, mm -hmm. like they want to form the maybe the the villagers brigade. Then there's the other brigade, yeah. Because they have called the 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 the, 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 guy, the Gashago and the governor for Nyeri mm -hmm. villagers, mm -hmm. basically because they are fighting for for their people, mm -hmm. yeah. So what the deputy president wants is all the people from Uhuru Kenyatta to Dindi Nyoro, to Kimani Shongo, mm -hmm. to the governor of Nyeri, Susan Kihek, all the people to unite so that we may talk with one voice. But when they, we are divided, then maybe after some five, four years, mm -hmm. three years, we will not have uh, that strength to fight for what we, our community wants. Mm -hmm. So that is the darkness that you were seeing ahead. Mm -hmm. our, uh, us being weakened. Is, is what he was t is talking about. In division. That is, that is the darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. You're, you're very articulate in, in how you're... Okay. But remember, please, the thoughts and sentiments that are expressed here do not reflect those of the station. Yes, but the facts are facts. But anything else, kindly? <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the finance bill. And in particular, there's something... That I don't know if, if it's maybe just me who's who's feeling like this is, has been really highlighted so the, the Kenya Bankers Association were in an uproar I think most of last week and it was because of the proposed 16% VAT that's a value added tax that's supposed to be that is being proposed to be in effect on financial transactions do you think that's wise as a country that we should impose 16% VAT on financial transactions um. For me, mm -hmm. when you look at a country, mm -hmm. a bill is proposed in parliament. Mm -hmm. Then there's the part of public participation. Mm -hmm. If the people, uh, if the people accept the bill, mm -hmm. then it is passed. Mm -hmm. But if the people reject the bill, mm -hmm. then it is not supposed to be to be passed in parliament. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's supposed to be a law. Right? Mm -hmm. So the 16% VAT on financial transactions should go to the machinan public participation. Mm -hmm. People should give their views. Mm -hmm. Then if people reject it, that sentiment, then it should be removed from mm -hmm. the bill. If people see that and if people are well educated on its benefits, then the government should pass it because Kenya is a democracy. Mm -hmm. It is a government of the people, mm -hmm. by the people, for the people. 
So you would stand in that truth that public participation actually goes a long way in determining whether a bill is passed or not? Yes. I like how confident you are. <laughs> okay, okay. There, there's a school of thought that would argue different. And they would say public participation is just quote unquote just for banter, studies are jabba, mm. but the bill will go either way. You don't know. But you've seen people, you've seen people go to parliament to give their views. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even today, there's a finance committee that is taking people's views mm -hmm. yeah, on the bill. You've seen the Bankers Association, mm -hmm. we have seen the, the Law Society, mm -hmm. we have seen university, uh, university students going mm -hmm. to give their views. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is what public participation entails. Mm -hmm. Because people have, have been saying that maybe the Monainchi has been forgotten. But when they form maybe an association, maybe the Boda Boda Association, mm -hmm. maybe there's, there's the Bankers Association, there's the Boda Boda Association, there's the Students Association, yeah? Then Parliament cannot call you as a mama boga and go to give mm -hmm. your personal view. You have to come together mm -hmm. as the people of Boda Boda, mm -hmm. as doctors, mm -hmm. as lawmakers, mm -hmm. uh, as lawyers, and give your views. That is what public participation entails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, public participation is actually going on right now as mm -hmm. we speak. Mm -hmm. The parliament is taking people's views, and uh, yeah, considering what people are saying about mm -hmm. the bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so public participation goes a long way. Mm. All right, so my last question, maybe as we wind this up. Jumes Mama Mamboga, you've triggered me somewhere. I saw in the news that Enrico Mondi was leading Mama Mboga, and they went, had in Mboga Zenyewe, to Pale Parliament. It was dispersed with a, with a little less decorum than I would have liked. But is there a way that we can put our grievances without having to go to the streets and running away from authorities. Yes, but uh, Eric Omondi is doing a nice work. Mm -hmm. But what uh, he actually did for me it is PR. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot take Mama Bogas from the market and mm -hmm. come and uh, cause mayhem co parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead, what you should do, mm -hmm. let them form an association. Mm -hmm. The unity we've been talking about. Yes, this whole the unity. Mm -hmm. Let them form an association because the bill touches on things which are, uh, which are uh, touching on what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe what sentiment of the bill are attacking? Maybe it's the 16% VAT on financial services. Let them now come, take the officials, take them to parliament, mm -hmm. and give their views. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, mandamano is, is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. You have to use, we have to be diplomatic. Mm -hmm. We have to be a diplomatic nation. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow this nation, that is. But if you want every time that maybe we have grievances, we go to the streets, mm -hmm. then we will not, uh, will not be doing anything of... Uh, Although we do have the right to pick it and it's in our constitution. You have, you have the right to pick it. Mm -hmm. But in a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. I think you saw what or Eric did. Arms, mm. Yeah. So, uh, for example, uh, we've, we've been having the, the mandamanos on the streets mm -hmm. for the university students. Mm -hmm. But if, 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 we, if the students are being taught at the universities and in high schools that the only way to, to give your views by going to the, to the streets, mm -hmm. then that will be, will be there for, for the next 30, 20, uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. We have to change it right now mm -hmm. yeah, from the high schools. Students have to go to the teachers and give their grievances. Mm -hmm. It's not a must for them to, to strike. Mm -hmm. At the universities, write letters to the authorities. Mm -hmm. Go give your views. Mm -hmm. And then the, the authorities should also take our views. Yeah, They mm -hmm. should consider our views. Instead of going to the streets, mm -hmm. uh, destroying properties, mm -hmm. yeah? people are being injured. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a nice thing for a, for a developing nation. Sana sana ju president alashina kitembea nje tunamaibisha kidogo. Yeah, tunaibisha president. <laughs> yeah. There is a country in Asia where they had, uh, as I finish, there's a country somewhere in Asia, they went viral I think two, three weeks ago. So they're having a parliamentary sitting and I don't know if he was a, a member, member of parliament. parliament. Who, 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 who
Ah, uh, that was that was very funny. That was very very funny. I hope we do not do the same thing, guys. All right. In conclusion, how do we find you on social media? Sorry. We need to share in all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. X, Instagram, mm -hmm. TikTok, mm -hmm. yeah, Threads, mm -hmm. and LinkedIn. All right. Yeah. So you'll be giving us nuggets of wisdom on those socials. Just yeah. be updating us what's going on, uh, what the things we should know, because our people perish for lack of knowledge. Actually, there's, there's a campaign that I'm leading right now mm -hmm. against body shaming in universities. Oh, wow. Because it's, it has become a big thing. Like, girls and boys are singing, sinking into depression because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So body shaming is actually a big thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I should address it here. To the body shamers, to the bullies, please stop it. Because uh, it is, it's just not right to body shame others. Yeah? So we should, uh, uh, and also the people who are being body shamed, accept your bodies the way they are. You should not sink to, uh, to depression because of mm -hmm. my view mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. You should be yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a thing that I say, already Nico, already Nico Mimi, yeah, so that is it. We need to share in all social media platforms. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, thank you so very much for coming. Thank you so very much, dear viewers, for staying with us. We are not done with you yet. We'll still have career and, of course, MCM a little while after. Do not go away.